In order to gain further access to the North West Leicestershire coalfaces, the joint line of the Midland and London North Western Railway was formed as the Ashby and Nuneaton Joint Railway. It was open to traffic in August 1873 and here, at Shackerstone, is where the line heading north from Nuneaton split into two distinct routes. To the east, by the collieries of Meesham, Donisthorpe and Netherseal, and to the west, through the sidings you see behind me, via Heather and South Leicestershire collieries. Other industries thrived here, like the Coronet and Red Bank Brickworks, and also Help Out Mill, which had its own siding to the north of this station. Despite closing to passengers in 1931, 17 freight trains ran daily until its eventual demise in the 1980s. The Ashby Canal was built during the canal mania of the 1790s to supply Nuneaton with coal and lime. In 1804, after 10 years of planning and value engineering by Benjamin Outram, many investors failed to honour their pledges, the canal stopped short, unable to reach lime deposits. As railway mania took off, canals were being bought and intentionally run down to encourage customers to the railways. When the Midland Railway took over the Ashby Canal in 1845, the Act included a clause that required them to maintain the canal in good order until completion of the railway. That railway was not built. The newly formed Midland Railway was hoping to expand their coal business after taking over the Erewash and Leicester and Swannington Railways, extinguishing their rivalry. In 1845, the Nottingham, Birmingham and Coventry Junction Railway was proposed to run from Kegworth to Coventry via Stoke Golding, Hinckley and Nuneaton. This was part of a greater plan to create a route from the Severn at Gloucester to the Humber at Grimsby. The line was backed by brewers, potters, hosiers and colliers. In October 1845, a railway 42 miles long connecting the Oxford and Rugby Railway was proposed, passing through the coalfields of northwest Leicestershire to Burton upon Trent. A month before, a proposal connecting Ashby and Burton on Trent via Atherstone, calling itself the Midland Union and Burton on Trent Ashby de la Zouch and Leicester Railway, had been proposed. When the Midland gained the Leicester and Swannington in 1846, it extended it at both ends, connecting the isolated railway to the growing network. This calmed down the speculations for the area for the next 15 years. The Midland wanted more than a slice of the exponentially growing market. The North West Leicestershire and South Derbyshire mines counted for 1% of the total UK coal industry, but still amounted to a huge sum of money. Today's study is in the west and northwest of Leicestershire, on the boundaries of Derbyshire and Warwickshire. We are in the territory of the Battle of Bosworth, where the Ashby Canal passes over the River Sense on its way to Nuneaton. The Leicester and Swannington was created to serve the existing collieries and quarries, such as Rawdon, which was sunk in 1821. Initially from Westbridge to Swannington in 1832, the line gained further assistance from the Swannington Incline in 1833 and the Coal Orton Tramway in 1835. Snibston No. 2 and Whittick Collieries soon followed in 1836 and other railways began to open such as the Midland Counties from Trent Junction to Rugby in 1840 and to Peterborough in 1846. When the LNWR reached Tamworth in 1847, the Midland took over the Leicester and Swannington, adding a number of stations and connected it to existing Midland lines, de-isolating the route. Though in use since 1849, Woodville and Swaddlingcote joined the Midland officially in 1851. In 1860, the LNWR proposed a railway throughout the heart of Midlands Territory from Manchester to Burton, but it faded without much interest. It was raised again in 1862 from Nuneaton to Gresley, and the Midland took an interest, but again it faded into obscurity. However, in 1864, an updated plan was proposed and named the Coalfields Railway Company, and now the Midland was startled. 
Costs between the Midlands and LNWR's proposals differed by as much as £600,000 and the Midlands suggested that in exchange for providing yard use at Derby, the line be jointly run. The LNWR, with a common sense approach, withdrew their bill and the Midland proposal received royal assent in August 1866 and a further act appeared in June 1867 homologating joint ownership. While plans were being drawn up, in 1868... Rawdon and Colliery connected to the railway. The Ashby to Derby line opened a year later and in 1870, Netherseal Colliery joined the railway and Donisthorpe Colliery came into being. In 1872, Wigston South Curve opened and on the 1st of August 1873, the joint line opened with stations at Higham on the Hill, Stoke Golding, Shenton, Market Bosworth and Shackerstone. To the west, a branch went through Stairstone, Meesham and Overseal and Moira, and to the east, a single line branch served Heather and Hugglescote. In the following May, Donisthorpe opened to coincide with the colliery connecting to the railway, two months before assent was given to build the Charmwood Forest Railway. Two years later, in 1876, the South Leicestershire Colliery opened for business. In 1877, the Colorton Tramway closed, followed by the South Leicestershire and Heather Collieries joining the railway. Help Out Mill siding opened in 1880, and in 1883, Overseal removed Moira from its name. On the 16th of April 1883, the Charmwood Forest Railway, another single track line opens, as well as Colville East and other stations to Loughborough. The area highlighted in this box will be the subject of the following video, as no story about the joint line is complete without the mention of the Bluebell line. In May, Woodville and Swaddlingcote, also known as the Swaddlingcote Loop, are connected. Five years later, the Hinkley to Stoke Golden Branch is disconnected and sleepers are sold as firewood. Overseal closes in 1890. It was a temporary station until the Midland gave LNWR access rights to their stations. In 1894, Meesham Colliery opens and connects to the railway. Heather is renamed Heather and Ibstock, and in 1895, the Red Bank Brick Manufactory joins the line. In 1896, Heather Colliery closes. In March 1899, the Great Central passes Leicester. This map is too small for all the detail in the very northwest of the county, so the area in this box shall be the subject of a separate video. At the turn of the century, the Coronet Brick Company opens. In 1905, Colville East is renamed Colville, which causes confusion on the Midland. In 1906, the Burton and Ashby Light Railway opens and extends in September to Castle Gresley. After five years of confusion, Colville is renamed Colville LNW and reverts to its original name following grouping and Colville becomes Colville Town. In 1927, the Burton and Ashby Light Railway closes, but tracks can still be seen outside the now closed Ashby Station. On the 13th of April 1931, stations close on both the Joint Line and the Charmwood Forest Railway. Misham remains open for summer specials, but all is not lost as freight services continue to operate with 17 trains daily as coal, bricks, ballast and flour remain in demand. Heather colliery sidings are removed in 1933. Following several training accidents of tiger moths, a fuel depot is constructed at Market Bosworth during World War II. No more crashes are recorded. In 1947, in the lead up to nationalisation, Nether Seal Colliery closes, as do Woodville and Swaddlingcote to passengers. The Swannington Incline goes out of use in 1948, and also the station in 1951. In 1952, the fuel depot siding closes, as does Barton Hill, and Heather and Ibstock siding is removed in 1954. In 1957, South Leicestershire Colliery closes at surface but outputs through Ellistown. Like many of the mines, they are connected underground. Decisions from the 1955 Modernisation Plan are still taking effect when Meesham closes after the passing of the last summer special and the Midland branch to Rugby closes. 
1963, the Charnwood Forest Railway shuts down. Woodfield closes to freight in 1964 with the closure of the Swaddling Coat Loop. Freight on the eastern branch of the Joint Line halts. Beaching's report of March 1963 sees closures of Colville, Ashby and Gresley. The Coronet Brick siding closes in 1965 and Leicester West Bridge in 1966. The line from Knighton Junction has been freight only ever since. The junction station of Syston closes in 1968 and the loss of the Great Central comes in 1969. In 1971, Nuneaton closes to Market Bosworth and a month later to Meesham, which continues to give Meesham and Donisthorpe collieries access to the railway. Help Out Mill and Red Bank Bricks no longer have railway access and the mill is sold in 1972. Heather open cast mining requires track use to transport the remains of the coal to the road from 1976, just before Rawdon is disconnected from the line. In 1980, the Melbourne line to Derby closes and in 1981, Meesham rail traffic ceases, with Donisthorpe lasting a further six months. In 1983, Snibston No. 2 and Whittick Collieries close, Meesham closes 1986 and for a brief reprieve, Coal Orton opens in 1988. Rawdon and Donisthorpe close in 1990. In 1992, after 20 years of test runs on remaining track and negotiations with British Rail, the Shackerstone to Shenton service made its inaugural ride as the Battlefield Line. Coal Orton Colliery closed in 1994 and Syston reopened as part of Phase 1 of the Ivanhoe Line. The Heather open car section of the line finally closed in 1995. On the 19th of March 2011, following some arson incidents, Market Bosworth officially reopened. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with the next video for the Charnwood Forest Railway. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Western Railway was formed as the Ashby and Dunning Joint Railway, Leicestershire Coalfaces, the joint line of the Midland and